Hello everyone, Monarch here, and I was about to get into a few matches and show some tech video for all of you, but was left with this finding a match screen for over 5 minutes and decided I wanted to create a different type of video instead. I enjoy this game immensely, and it is very fun to play with other people in the right conditions when there are no rollback issues. But because complaining about it isn't going to do anything, I decided to create this video on what Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl needs to change in order to bring this game back to life. Let's get right into the video, shall we? I know the dev team is working hard on this game, and I by no means am blaming them for this. They're a small indie team that are trying their best to accommodate the huge numbers the game initially brought in at release, with the strict time schedule set up by the higher ups. You can clearly see their vision for the game as they implemented many cool mechanics into the game, but the polish of the game was a bit lacking, with many abilities having the same exact animation. Though, even though the game is lacking in the polish department, the game is a really great game, and I can see that polish slowly coming through in future updates. The number one problem this game has right now is the very low player base. The small number of people who are willing to spend $40 to $50 on basically an indie game in early access is a hard sell when their arcade mode is very lackluster, and everyone is basically just playing the game for the multiplayer aspect. But when you finally decide to go into their multiplayer quick search, you're left with almost no players to queue into, and the ranked lobbies are basically non-existent. When I do finally find a match, it's usually a new player who's looking forward to a great experience, but is matched with an experienced player, such as myself, where I quickly take their stock and notice that I need to take it easy on this player. I don't want to scare off the very little player base checking out the game where their only experience online is getting demolished. I want this new player to find the same enjoyment I found when playing the game. And the best way to do that is to match them with players of similar skill levels so that they can slowly learn together. I know many players strongly despise skill-based matchmaking systems, but a new player is not likely to come back to the game if he keeps getting queued into advanced players who constantly zero to death them. We need to understand that we don't want to only appease the competitive players, but the casual audience is practically 85% of their revenue going into the game. And that if competitive players want nice things, then they need to make sure their casual audience is having a great time as well. Skill-based matchmaking will make it so good players will play against other good players, and new players can learn the game against other new players. Then, as the new player slowly gets better and enjoys the game, then he'll slowly play against stronger and stronger opponents. Though, this leads to the next problem. The player base is already incredibly small as it is, and the skill-based matchmaking systems will only make the queue times even longer, and we don't want that happening. There are two main solutions to this problem, and the developer team is already working on one of them. The first and best solution to this problem is to just make this game free-to-play. The free-to-play model has proven time and time again to be the most successful route to a great game, with games like Brawlhalla, Fortnite, Apex Legends, League of Legends, Dota, and so many more other massively successful games that have taken this approach. Let's face it, having a bigger player base improves the advertisement for the game, as many players can come in and test out whether or not they like the game. If they enjoy the game, then they'll invite their other friends to join them as well, and then the cycle continues as content creators have more viewers, which spreads even more publicity to the game for free. The free-to-play model is very powerful, and a big player base is very important for any game to survive in the long run. Though the company has to make money somehow, and... And that's where cosmetics and loot crates need to come into play. Love them or hate them, the company needs to make money somehow, and these additions won't make the gameplay pay to win, but just allow you to style your character to your own heart's content. I don't care how many cosmetics are implemented into the game, if it means the player base will drastically increase by going to the free-to-play model. I just want more people to enjoy this game as much as I do, and what better way to do this than to make the game free to play. The second solution to this problem is the one that they're already currently working on, and that is implementing crossplay into the game. We don't want each console to isolate their player bases as they are already very small as it is. Combining all the players into one will increase the player base three to five times as much, and shorten those queue times by quite a bit. Though this solution is very amazing, they still need to address why the players are dropping the game in the first place, or not giving the game a chance at all. That $50 price tag needs to go in order for new players to even attempt playing this game, 
and the reason many players are dropping this game in the first place, and the reason many players are dropping the game in the first place, is that the online connection is less than desirable. Many people are dropping the game because there's no one to play with because of the reasons I've said previously, and the players who do stick around strongly despise the current rollback system. There are way too many times where one side rollback is a thing, and if you play anyone on the other side of the coast with over 70 ping, then the game is just rollbacking constantly. The online needs some improvements, but I know the team is working on this problem, and so I can see this problem being resolved in time, but they really need to grow their small team because that's just way too much to ask for and not enough labor working on the project. They literally have one single dude working on the networking aspect of the game, and he needs just a little bit of extra help. So to solve their player base problem, I would like the game to become free to play, cross play, skill based matchmaking, and other improvements to their online gameplay. The next thing I want to talk about is the mechanics of the game, and the combos in the game are not very new player friendly by any means. Obviously, I don't want all the combos to be brain dead easy to pull off, but I do want new players to still be able to find and pull off simple chains that make them feel like they are doing something. The fastball mechanic to extend combos in this game is not easy for new players to just pick up, and that's why I would like at least a few very new friendly characters where they can combo well without needing to do advanced mechanics. Think Mario, Palutena, Chrome, Chrome, Cloud, etc. from Smash Ultimate. It can be a simple up air string into up special combo like Mario, or whatever they come up with, that will allow the player to do some decent looking combo without the need of fast following the combo to get it to work. The game is also too hyper aggressive. I wouldn't mind if they toned it back just a little. Because once you lose your air dash in this game, be prepared to lose 50-100% to of your health for that single mistake. I know they had good intentions trying to make it similar to Melee, but with even more movement options, but the game needs some more defensive options to escape combos. The current meta is to spam your aerial hurtbox until you land a hit, and then just go ham on your opponent as everything is very lagless and spammable. And there's really no way to punish an opponent pressing whatever they want. I would like to see more end lag on aerial heavy attacks and more landing lag all around. If you use an aerial attack and then quickly fast fall into the ground to get the landing lag, it reduces the normal lag drastically as opposed to the full duration of the attack. This allows you to cancel almost every single ability you want and causes the opponent to press whatever they want with very little commitment. I would like to see more ending lag in general, especially when it comes to landing lag. The next mechanic that I would like to see adjusted is the rock paper scissors mechanic. As I bet all of you have seen multiple times now is that a player wins the rock paper scissors then the opponent gets out of the stun so quickly that you don't get to punish your opponent even after hard reading them this way. The stun that happens after rock paper scissors needs to stun the opponent longer and not be mashable. Most mash players are already accustomed to mashing already and you can get out of the stun so quickly if you mash your controller that a follow up becomes impossible. On top of that, I would also like the rock paper scissors mechanic to work properly when the situation does arrive. The system is supposed to be up heavy is supposed to beat the down heavy, but that is not the case at all. It is not based on the aerial use that determines the rock paper scissors, but where the move comes out. So if you're using the mid strong aerial, but your character's mid strong aerial hits downwards, then that mid strong counts as a down strong, not as a mid strong. It's based on which direction the aerial comes out, which makes certain characters have no rock paper scissors mechanics for the downward direction, making it impossible to even attempt the rock paper scissors on those characters as they are falling. Or even weirder with characters like April, where her down heavy in the air can count as an up, mid, and down strong, all in the same move. The last mechanic I would like to see changed is to allow air dashes while in the tumble animation. It doesn't make sense to waste a jump to escape tumble in order to air dash in the direction you want. This change would also slightly help the hyperaggression problem as the only way to air dash out of a combo was to first waste your jump and then air dash in the direction of your choice. And now both of your defensive options are gone because you have to do one of them in order to do the other. This also means that if you used your jump mid combo and are sent off stage in a tumble, you can't use your air dash even though you haven't even used it once yet. Unless you use an attack to get out of the tumble, but that takes time to do, and you have to wait for the end lag before air dashing upwards. And the opponent can be on you in that time. To conclude all the mechanics I would like changed for the better would be to increase the landing lag on all moves, have a simple to use noob friendly combo character, fix the rock paper scissors system by increasing the stun duration and making it actually work properly, allow air dashes while in tumble, 
and other general smoothing of animations, especially up tilts all looking the same. That is my list of the things that Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl needs to implement in order to bring the fire back into the game. What are your thoughts on this? Are there additional changes you would like to see in the game, or some that you just straight up disagree with me on? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you enjoyed it, as it really helps me out. And until next time, peace!